What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today we'll be reviewing this dusty thing, the Hoover, or Hoover, the Bissell Rewind Smart Clean, model 58F8-3. Now this particular machine is the higher end version of the Bissell CleanView Helix, which was the third generation Bissell CleanView that was released in 2009. What do you have to say about that? What are your thoughts? Seems like there's no thoughts in that noggin at all. No thoughts, head empty. Isn't that right, Rude Bruce? The main differences between this machine and the Bissell Clean View Helix is that this was the slightly more premium model with a few extra features. Namely, a clean carpet sensor, a clean filter indicator, and a cord rewind. That's pretty much it. Also, a very nice blue color scheme. The main difference between this particular machine and the newer Bissell Clean Views is two big differences besides the obvious industrial design discrepancies. This particular machine does clean better than a lot of the newer clean views, as the brush roll is a little bit more aggressive, and the hose doesn't quite have the same length when it's stored on the machine, so it has slightly better airflow as the air has less space to travel through before it needs to get to the floor. Although, it also is a bit heavier and filters significantly poorer than the newest Bissell Clean View that I reviewed, which, if you're wondering, is this. Now, strangely enough, despite the hose being what appears to be a lot shorter than the newer clean views, it actually has almost the same amount of reach. Unlike the previous, the newest Bissell Clean View, where it can easily get up an entire 13 or 12 set flight of stairs, this machine comfortably gets up 10 stairs and can stretch to the 11th, but the top step it can't quite get to, but depending on how wide your stairs are, that could have an effect on that. And the machine does tilt over a little bit, but it has a lot of length when it comes to this hose. So realistically, if you're able to safely have the machine at the top of the stairs to get the top two steps, this machine can clear an entire flight of steps, which is pretty impressive considering how the hose is relatively short looking when it's on the machine, very similar to the LG Mate Hoover Elite Rewind from you know, many, many, many years ago that I reviewed a number of months ago. So it has that going for it. It has a very long hose, and it's capable of getting up into around any crevice you need to get into, but it still stores very compact on the machine, which is nice. You've got a hose wand built in just like all the previous clean views and power forces of yesteryear and today, if you get the big green or sanitaire versions, and you've got the standard attachment array as many Bissels. You've got this combination combo tool. <laughs> combination combo tool. You've got this combination upholstery tool and dusting brush, although in reality this upholstery tool is useless and this dusting brush is not suitable for dusting, but the bristles are nice and stiff so it's great for upholstery or even grooming your cat, speaking from experience. You can use this to brush your dog or your cat and they tend to enjoy it, at least mine do, as it's a nice stiff brush that isn't nearly as harsh as a lot of the animal brushes, but still does a decent job at removing pet hair. I'm actually quite fond of this attachment, at least this side of it. This side I don't touch at all, and you swivel this to each side where the opening is. So I just leave the opening on the brush side and use it as an upholstery brush. That fits right onto the hose, and this hose also fits standard Dyson attachments from the DC25 and newer all the way up to the US Ball Animal 2 and 3. So if you want to use the Tangle Free Turbine, the Soft Dusting Brush, or any of the other really good quality Dyson attachments, you can use those on these machines, which is something I like about Bissells. You can also use Panasonic or Kenmore attachments, so if you want to attach a bare floor tool and some extra extension wands to clean bare floors with this machine, you can do that as well. What is another thing I like about these? Even though these are very rudimentary, in practice they're very versatile. And this tool stores on board the machine like this. And one interesting thing is that the crevice tool is a nice long length, that's not super interesting, although it is good, but it's the fact that you can use the crevice tool as an extension wand with this attachment, as there are grooves built in that lets you put it in just like that and use it on either side to aid in extension wandness. We've also got a relatively short extension wand, although it's fairly typical for Bissells nowadays. And since you have the hose wand, you've got a good amount of reach with this. Pretty decent, if I do say so myself. And there's nothing stopping you from adding extra extension wands. 
as if you really want to, you can store an extension wand both on the machine like this, although it's not the most elegant solution, but you can do that and you can store another extension wand next to this. So you theoretically could store two extension, extra extension wands on this machine, although it wouldn't look the nicest. It looks better on the first gen clean views because it can route it through the attachment peg on the bottom if you so choose, although that kind of does defeat the purpose. Whenever you're done, the crevice tool slides into the extension wand like this for storage and slaps onto the side of the machine. Hose wand goes in like this and clips up at the top. A lot of customers don't bother putting the hose in this clip, but I recommend it as it keeps it out of the way. There's also a cord clip right here, but be careful because if you pull it out at a funny angle, it could tear up the cord. Speaking of which, we've got the cord rewind right here. It's pretty terrible. I mean, it works. It actually works really well considering it's mounted vertically, much in a similar vein to, again, the first generation Hoover Elite Rewind that I've now referenced twice when comparing it to this machine. There's a lot of similarities, although I don't have that machine anymore. So you got this pedal right here that you can push with your finger or with your foot, and that allows you to retract in the 25-foot cord. Now, whenever you want to do this, you want to stop when it reaches the yellow mark on the cord. And when it reaches the red mark, definitely do not pull it out any further. In fact, pull it in a little bit so that way that red mark is no longer visible. So this has a 25-foot cord, but in practice, you can only use about 24 and a half feet of it, at least safely. So there is that. So we've got that. Extension cord, not extension cord, but you've got the main power cord. It's an okay length, but I would have ex I would have liked 30 feet, but I would much rather have a 30 foot cord with no rewind, which is why I greatly prefer the Sanitaire SO4110A or the Bissell Big Green because they also filter better in this machine. Now, one of the selling points of this machine is the clean carpet sensor, which does work. It's got a little microphone in the base of the hose right here that actually senses when debris goes past it. It's a very rudimentary system, and it's been around for 20, 30 odd years. There's even some Hoover Power Drive models from back in the day that had a very similar sensor to these, as well as some Maytag wind tunnels and all sorts of other brands. But this implementation is a lot less, it's a lot less technical than a lot of the different sensors and circuit boards that you see on Dyson and Dream Tech machines nowadays. So it's not as advanced. It definitely doesn't recognize particles or anything like that. It just shows you dirty or clean. Now, I don't really like this system because I find that these lights are very bright and very distracting whenever I'm trying to vacuum. As if you're vacuuming slow enough and you're overlapping your strokes like you should be when you're vacuuming, then this sensor is pretty superfluous anyways because if you're using proper vacuuming techniques, which admittedly a lot of people don't, then you shouldn't need that. However, in practice, a lot of people vacuum way too fast and don't overlap their vacuuming strokes. They're often leaving sections of carpet that aren't unvacuumed. So for those people, this may be a pretty valuable tool to help them properly clean their carpets because if they're paying attention to that light, then at least they'll know when the machine says them that the carpet is clean or not. And I actually do find this pretty effective and it's, it's not lying, it definitely is telling the truth. Whenever it gets clean to the machine's ability, it will mark it as clean. And considering this machine cleans very well, it's pretty accurate. Now, it's possible that this sensor would work better on a machine that is one of the best deep cleaners, like maybe a Recar, but it that definitely does the job. Considering this machine is a pretty solid deep cleaner, then that is pretty effective. You also have a clean filter indicator right here, which is very simple. Whenever the airflow is blocked, this will move over to red from green, and it works very well in of itself. It's kind of hard to see, but it is in there. So that is that. Now, as far as the filters go, since we're about to be on that subject, we can see that there are several filters in this. And this is kind of the biggest discrepancy between this and the newer clean views. The newer clean views have a dual cyclonic cassette that's very similar to this. You've got a dual cyclonic cassette, the entire thing comes apart without tools and you've got a basic washable foam filter up in the top. This is a much better solution than what Bissell did back in 2012. The reason why is because this particular set of filters is very, very poor filtration. Now, the, the dual cyclonic cassette isn't amazing either, but for a budget machine, it's pretty solid for filtration. This is not. You've got no cyclone anywhere in this machine. Bissell advertises their helix system, which are just little ribs on the side of the dust cup to try to emulate a cyclone, but it's really not the proper cyclone. What instead happens is all the dirt is essentially sucked past this separator, 
which means a lot of fine dust will immediately go into that separator and down into this inner and outer circular filter. On the previous Bissell Powertrack Revolution machines, it had side channels that would allow it to separate the dust that way, and it was actually very effective, is one of the things I liked about that machine. They got rid of that in favor of the same filter setup as the Clean V2 and Power Force Bagless, only configured a little bit differently. A lot of customers had issues where that since that filter was attached to the main bin, people wouldn't understand that there was a filter there that needed to be cleaned, and they would just ignore it and eventually throw away the entire product. So what Bissell did now is whenever you twist this lever and pull out the dust cup, the filter stays on the machine. So you just have the cup and you know this is a separate piece and you can very clearly see the filter and clean it or replace it as needed. Bissell recommends cleaning this set of inner and outer circular filters every month and it just twists right out. I'll do a video after this showing how to maintain these filters. And if you're watching this video and you've never replaced this filter or you've never replaced this filter on the side, then now is the time to replace those filters, as these particular filters are very dusty and you need to change these pretty often. This inner and outer circular filter I recommend replacing every year, and this post motor filter I also recommend replacing at least every year, if not every six months. In fact, you could probably go six months replacing both filters, as this machine bypasses a lot of dust through the motor, which not only shortens motor life, it also pushes a lot of dust out into your air, and you can smell it when you vacuum. Now when you have clean filters, it's not so bad, but it's still a problem. So filtration is not at all a strong suit on this machine. It's not even worth mentioning. Yes, there is a HEPA filter, and that is definitely better than not having a HEPA filter, but it's not a sealed system, not even close. If Bissell had just added a seal underneath this filter, like right where you see those cams, if Bissell had added just a little rubber seal, that would have gone a long way as far as sealing this machine, but for whatever reason, they didn't do that. Probably because they understand that this machine will bypass a lot of dust into the motor, which will then clog the HEPA filter, causing you to need to replace that more often than you otherwise should need to, and also, it can throw the motor off balance, throw the fan off balance, and dry out the bearings of the motor, which makes the motor get super loud, and in some cases, even clog it up to the point where it loses suction, and at that point, the machine is so loud and has so little suction that customers end up throwing away the entire product. And hopefully, in Bissell's eyes, buying another Bissell, which a lot of them did. So, not a great design, and even as someone who likes Bissells of this era, it was just objectively a terrible design. Bissell's Revolution system was way better, as it had two filters that were built in a similar way to the first gen clean view, but the Revolution system made a big difference in actually separating the fine dust so it didn't go through the filters, and that was a lot better system. It still wasn't perfect, but it was a big step of improvements. Now, had Bissell done that for this machine, I feel like these filters would last a lot longer and have potentially lasted a bit longer and caused the machine not to die so quickly. But Bissell eventually did remedy that once the dual cyclonic patents ran out and just simply implemented a much more straightforward dust cup setup. And this is much better than whatever garbage this is. So good on Bissell for fixing that and making a much better system on their uprights. I've praised this dust cup design many, many times, considering how easy it is to disassemble and clean and how relatively effective it is at keeping dust out of the motor, considering Bissell's very poor track record with previous clean views. So if filtration is at all your concern and you have one of these or you're considering picking up one of these, just skip out on it and get one of the newer ones or ideally get a bagged unit instead and that would solve that problem. So this machine does great at performance and picking up debris, but keeping that debris in the machine, it definitely struggles with. Now, while we're down here, I can show you how to use the machine in upright mode. Press this pedal right here, and it leans back. You can push it again one more time to get it to lie flat, although all this stuff is in the way, so if you're trying to get underneath very, very low furniture, you're likely not going to do it. If you remember my old black coffee table, it was one of those basic ones you get at Walmart for like 30 bucks. It, this would get under that just fine, but anything lower, it would definitely struggle with. But that is an option. You've got five position height adjustment settings. Ignore the fact that this has bare floor. This only goes from low pile to high pile. There is no brush roll shutoff or squeegee, so not only will it scatter debris, it will also damage the machine and your floors potentially, so don't use this on bare floors. If you need to use this machine to clean bare floors, get a bare floor attachment that attaches to the hose and get some extra extension wands and use it like a canister. But with how cheap 
with but with how cheap you can get basic stick packs like the Bissell Featherweights or 3-in-1 that you can get for $20, $30, I recommend just getting one of those and using that for your kitchen and your bathroom if you have all carpets. Because if you have all carpets, then those would be the only places you need something to clean bare floors, and this would be perfectly sufficient for everything else. If you have more of a mix, then look into a different machine that has a brush roller shut off, unless you want to use that smaller Bissell for everything that isn't carpets. So definitely keep that in mind because this machine is not for bare floors. Don't even attempt to use it on bare floors. It's not worth it. This machine is way too aggressive. It will tear up either your floors, the machine, both, or just scatter everything at your feet. So that is that. You do have a nice bright headlight up front and it's fairly easy to change with just a little coin or flathead screwdriver. It's a standard peanut bulb, so nothing too major to talk about there. And that is pretty much that. So what about the overall opinions on the clean view? Well, there is one thing I will say, and that's the turtle brush is much, much better than on the newer Bristles. I've said this many, many times, but this thing is very effective. Now, I already recorded this review earlier today, but I re-recorded it because my pants ripped. I'm not even kidding. Um, and I didn't want to show that on YouTube, obviously, just, just my outer pants, but still. Not sure how much YouTube would appreciate that. So I re-recorded this video. So all the pet hair and dust that was on my couch that I vacuumed up with this turbo brush is no longer there. So I can't exactly demonstrate that, but just take my word for it, this turbo brush is much better than the newer turbo brushes. And the nice thing about these Bissels is they also fit Dyson attachments. So if you want to use the Tangle Free Turbine soft dusting brush, or even the Dyson Groom tool, you can use those on this machine. They fit just fine on the hose. So that's an extra little tidbit that I really like about these Bissels. Even though they're very basic, in practice they're very versatile as well. And that turbo brush just clips right on the top. So definitely a big improvement over the newer Bissell turbo brushes. I really wish they'd go back to this design because it just worked much, much better. And it makes this machine much more effective for tool usage than the newer Bissells. Despite the fact that the hose at first glance appears shorter, it's really not. So tools is definitely much better on this than the newer Bissells and cleaning performance also is. You also have the side mounted power switch, which I greatly prefer, because it's easy to tell when the machine is off or on. You also have the back facing carrying handle, which it's up to you if you prefer that over the front facing carrying handle. This machine is a little bit more weighty than the newer Bissells, but the build quality is also better, so there is a trade-off. The only thing that isn't built better on this compared to the newer Bissells is the pedal release, as those fail a lot but you can still find replacements of those on occasion. So with that said, do I recommend this? Well, for me personally, the filtration is definitely a disqualifier because I can't use this machine. It just doesn't filter well. And while this machine is very nostalgic and I always wanted one of these back when I was a kid, this won't be staying in my collection. Now that I have the Bissell Velocity, which has a bag, which has not the Corp Rewind and not the clean carpet sensors, which I don't like anyways, and it has a black hose and a black front, so there's no fading or you don't have to worry about the brush holes not matching, I'm definitely going to use that machine instead. And this machine will be going to Princess Sophia by the end of the week. So you'll likely see that on her channel. So with that said, this machine, like I mentioned, cleans great, but filters very poorly, and the hose is pretty decent considering how good it is. And parts like filters, belts, brush rolls, not color match ones, but still brush rolls, are all readily available. Same with attachments, even hoses. So if you have one of these and it needs a little bit of a tune-up, you don't necessarily have to throw it away. You can fix it up and keep it running, and these machines are very easy to work on. So that's really good too. So if you don't care about filtration, which I don't know why you wouldn't, but maybe if you're using this in an environment where you just don't have to, then it's a, still a decent choice. Because again, it cleans well and the tools are pretty solid. Build quality is not too bad either. And it doesn't have the high-pitched whine that newer Bissels have. So for me personally, the poor filtration is a deal breaker, at least for me to actually use one of these. Although I am still looking for a first-gen clean U8990 since that was the first ever vacuum I ever repaired, and I do want one of those for sentimental reasons. But as far as actually using one of these older bagless Bissels, it's a no-go for me. But if you keep this machine clean 
and you replace you replace and change the filters as often as you should, then you could definitely get by with it. So anyways, uh, also, if you do have one of these and you're dead set on using it, please get an air purifier. Um, it's better that that dust doesn't escape the machine in the first place because it's not circling in your air. But if you're going to use one of these, keep the filters clean, keep the machine clean, and get an air purifier. Get one that's way bigger than your room needs it to be, just in case. Anyways, this is Intellitech Studio signing out with my full in-depth review on the Thistle Rewind Smart Queen. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, and I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you all have a good one. Peace.